to learn so you can be different you'll be diligent to learn so your life can really take another turn this um session we're going to be looking at kingdom marriages how to have an effective kingdom marriage or what it takes to have an effective kingdom marriage or you can um if you're very civil and structured you can say how to get married the kingdom way it's available for every child of god what do i mean what is available a partner if you check the original plan for man genesis chapter one you will see clearly that that he created now he formed man and woman in creation he created the male and the male was the female when it came to formation as to the body he formed a female, a male and a female, male and a female. The first thing I want us to look at is the foundation, the foundation of kingdom marriages. The first and the most important is the Lord, the creator of marriage himself. There is a very big mistake that almost all of us have made. Uh, I pray you haven't, the mistake of putting marriage before God. Mm. It's an error and it has to be corrected, especially for kingdom citizens. This one reason accounts for the reason why the purpose of marriage has been abused. And when the purpose of anything is not known, it will be abused. Let's settle it. Marriage was not created for man. Neither was man created so they can marry. Man was created for purpose. And in your purpose or in marriage, or marriage is one of the platforms, marriage is one of those privileged opportunities for us to fulfill purpose. When you are not living the purpose of your life, you do not qualify for marriage. I'll say it again. If you're not doing the reason for which you were created, you do not qualify for kingdom marriage. You don't. You, you have already disqualified yourself for kingdom marriage, or you're not yet ready. Why do I say so? Number one, our case study for today will be Boaz. But before we go into digging the book of Ruth, let's go back to Genesis where it all began. When the father had created man, he gave him an assignment. He gave him a purpose. Then he formed the man, put him in the garden. After he formed the man, gave the man the responsibility of the garden, which is his purpose, his assignment, he now formed the woman. Uh, I know you thought I was just being mean to you. No, I'm showing you what what. So if it's not working, you don't have to. It's not always the in-laws. It's not always demons. It's the pattern. If you're listening to me on YouTube or you're here with me live on you don't type the word pattern. It's the pattern. If you break the pattern, or like the scripture says in, in Psalms 11, if the foundation is broken, what can the righteous do? Miss Ima will answer that question anytime, anywhere. Rebuild it. Just go back and rebuild it. It might take a longer time. You might waste some resources, but rebuild it. 
That's the answer. That's it. Check Genesis. A woman never showed up until there was an assignment for her to do, to help. I know we've heard. That's the foundation of a kingdom marriage. Number one, you need to have a relationship with God first. Be stable in Jesus, in the word. You can't talk about a kingdom without the word. Then, meaning the foundation for real is the father. It's your relationship with God the father that has now caused you to be stable in him through the word. Now the next thing is your purpose. If you don't know assignment or purpose, you will never enjoy marriage. The reason is simple. You will make your, your spouse your assignment. You will depend on your spouse. And on instead, you will go to your spouse for things that only God. Ay, 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 ay. You will go to your spouse for things that only God can provide. What a formula for failure. You want to enjoy marriage? I'm telling you the truth, kingdom marriage, a kingdom marriage is heaven on earth. It's the best thing that can happen to anybody. But how many people are willing to do the pattern? How many? Marriage is primarily between three people, two, two people and a God. Marriage is between three or three, it involves three, primarily three. Marriage involves primarily three. Primarily, three people are involved in a marriage. If your marriage is not involved, if, if, if it is not three, there is already a problem. What do I mean? It means that the female in the marriage, there's a female in the marriage, there's a male in the marriage, and there's a God. And I tell you the truth, that's how all marriages are. The question is the God in your marriage. Is it the one that created marriage or is the one that is against marriages? Mm. If the God in your marriage is the one that hates marriages, what's your foundation like? You're already destroying why you've not even started building. It's not a surprise that people get married nowadays and in two weeks it's all destroyed because the foundation was not the originator of marriage. The foundation was the one that hates marriages. I'll say it again. You will have a father-in-law. You have a God in your marriage. But the question is, who is the God in your marriage? Is it God, the father, or the devil? So marriage involves two people. In the kingdom, it involves two people. A male and a female. A male and a female. A male and a female. Okay? Most marriages, your in-laws, your family will be part of your marriage. You don't have to invite them. They will show up and go for a bit. You get married in a family where they are so egocentric. They will own your marriage and they can chew it for you or they can become the drivers. They can tell you exactly what to do. How are they going to do that? They can come directly and physically to your house or your spouse can keep telling you that's not how my mother did it. That's not how my dad did it. That's still, your, that's still an indication that your in-laws are ruling the marriage. Now let's go to Boaz. Let's look at Boaz. I wrote down here, I said a checklist in my notes, a teaching notes for today. I say a checklist for kingdom relationships. There's so much we might need to read, but I will avoid that just so we don't make this too long. We can always do it part two another time. I said Boaz checklist for kingdom marriage pattern. Moa owned a field. Do you realize that? He was not an idle man. You, know, you want to marry somebody, child, and kill her. Well, let's talk to the women first, my dear. Don't marry a man that don't have a job. We've already set a purpose, right? He has a purpose and he has a job. Yes, it's very possible that somebody's purpose can also be where they work to earn a living. It's very possible that those two could be the same thing. But make sure that he has something he's doing. I used to teach this same um, class uh, during a primary class this year at Deal for Global Impact. And I would say, at least let the man have the potential. No, I have struck off potentials because I have seen men with potentials that decided to put the potentials in the box, nail it, and become dummies, and their wives 
and the wife that got married to them because of their potential is not suffering. God forbid, maybe with children. So don't marry a potential. Marry the potential that's already been used, okay? This is a wisdom that you will be grateful you heard before you made a choice of a lifetime partner. Now, let me say here clearly that marriage is a good thing. The Bible says it clearly. Even it was God himself that said it. Marriage is a good thing. It is not and will never be to your disadvantage if you marry correctly. It will always take you forward. A good marriage is a good thing. A kingdom marriage is a blessing. What are you looking for in a man? Let's start with the, the female first, I think. The female will be better. Look at Boa. He had a farm. He owned a farm. So don't marry a man that is not having something to show forth for at the end of the month. Number two, he did not just have a farm. His farm was structured. How is his life? You remember when Boa went into the sea in, in Ruth chapter two, verse five. There was a lead man in his field. It means that he was a man that had structure in his life. Ah, those who are married are like, oh, I should have heard this. No, you can go back and begin to pray this prayer point for your spouse. The Lord help my husband to have structure. The Lord help my husband to have a job. It's too late for you to go out and be crying and say, man, I made a mistake. It, it, it won't help you. The best thing you can do right now is to pray. That the things you're hearing, excuse me, <coughs> that the things you're hearing, you can now apply it to your already existing relationship. But for those who are not yet married, listen, listen, marriage is sweet if you do it the kingdom way. Poor had a farm, he had a structure. He didn't just own a farm, he was a structured man. Number three, he had people skills. Mm, mm. The man you want to marry, who are his friends? Jesus. Who are his friends? How does he talk to his friends? How does he talk about his friends? Not just two, but about as well. You call him, I was in the, I was playing soccer with these stupid boys over there. Eh? Really? They'll call you stupid. It's just a matter of time. Don't mind all the sweetie they call you now. It's a matter of time they'll start calling you stupid as well. People management. Some people that are married say, it's true, it's true. I wish I knew it. I heard him call his mother silly woman. Now he's calling me silly woman. I'm so sorry. <laughs> you have to pray that one out. I also know people that can be very nice until you marry them. <laughs> so there's a balance too. That's why we don't want to do it in the flesh. Number four, his speech. How does he talk to you? Yeah, if he if, if in the courtship he is already calling you names, or he's trying to do to tell you he wants to marry you and he's calling you names, he's so mean to you. How does he talk to you with respect? I'm not talking about flattery. Listen, we are spirit so Every human being is first of all a spirit being. Meaning, if somebody is lying to you, you know. I don't get it with us women. You know the man is lying to his teeth for something. That's why mentors are important. That's why role models are important. Let me stop and say this. If you ever want to get married as a young lady, you need to have a marriage, a couple that is your role model. It must not be your pastor. It must not be your big sister. It, must, it, must, it could even be your friend that has a really standard kingdom marriage. You make them your role model and tell them. Don't say people are your mentors or role models and they don't know, right? You have to do that. How does he speak to you? People's speeches or words are very revealing. You know that? When somebody speaks or when you're talking with somebody, listen to the choice of their words. The, I, I mentor spiritual mentorship. That's one of the privileges I have. 
when I'm talking with my mentees, I don't only really hear their emotions. I also hear their choices of words and they can tell me a lot about where they are emotionally. Even when people are masking their emotions, listen to their words. Boaz came to the, to the field. Hear what he was telling them. God bless you all. He's the owner of the field. He's wishing them well. He's blessing them. A man that will not speak good about you, speak good to you now, wrong. Number five, check if he's hospitable. How does he approach people? When you say someone is hospitable, what do you really mean? That's a question I want us to look at for a few seconds here. No tribalism. Hmm. Somebody said, you know, I just want to marry you because we all come from Bayangilan. Yeah, that's all. Are you kidding me? So the reason for this marriage is a tribe? Sweetheart, there's a bigger reason for marriage than a tribe. Oh, we came from Metalan, or we are all from Jamaica. <laughs> hey, I want my Jamaican black queen. Really? Oh, Jamaican black sweet lady. Whatever. Sweetheart, if a man ever tells you he wants to marry you because of your culture or your tradition. He has reduced you to zero. I won't add to that. You heard me. Boaz was hospitable to a woman that her tribe was nothing. Zero tribe. Tribe was not a consideration. He came there for love. He came there to be a blessing. It wasn't about the tribe. It wasn't. I want to share a testimony of a great woman of God. This one is for those single sisters that you're asking yourself. I've had two children. I've had three children. I've had five children. I've had seven. Actually, I am divorced. Actually, I am separated. Oh my goodness, my husband died. It's Ina. Do I have to still go through this checklist? Yes. Don't lower the standard. I want to give you the testimony of a pastor. I wrote her name in my note, but I'm being led not to call her name. But if you really want to know, I can even give you her YouTube channel. You can go check the testimony out for yourself. She had five children. Please write it down. Five children. And she's been married. Miss Nebula, you can type in how many times she's been married in the child. But I don't know how many times. She'd be two or three times. She had five children. She made up her mind that she would not settle for the wrong man. I believe she was married at least twice or at least once. I know that the last person she left before she got her boas, she was married to him. Great pastor. I remember the first time I watched her and her husband. They just, oh, really? She's been married four to five times. Wow, I didn't know that. You know who I'm talking about, right? Type her name so we make sure we are talking about the same person. She was determined not to settle. She was determined. Yes, you have got it right. Yes, that's the person. Wow, married about four to five times. She never settled. She prayed. Look, look, look at her life. Let's examine her life according to what we have seen so far. She's born again. She's doing that is real for her life. She's a pastor. She's serving God with all of her heart. She was determined to do God's will. She was doing purpose. She refused to settle with the wrong man four to five times. She refused. She was determined. She was a woman of faith. I remember the first time I saw her, she had a nose ring on. And later on, she went and did some really crazy things that you would think that as a pastor, she wouldn't do that. No, she does not leave so you can clap for her. Mm -mm. She has made up her mind to trust the Lord and she refused to settle. Just like wood, she served her God. She said no to mediocrity. 
Do you think it's easy? No. But that they always reward all when we go the extra mile for him. I'm telling you now, when I look at her and the new man the Lord has brought into her life, great man of God, married once, never had children, came into her life, and he's a father of five. This God can restore. But will you be ready? Will you be willing for him to restore you? She went through the ridicules. She went through all the pain. She went through everything people, people call her name. But she never gave up. She stood to the Lord. She said, don't settle. That's all I'm begging you today. Don't settle. You can really, especially those who are not yet married, you can really, really marry a good husband. But the question is, are you the good material? Now we're flipping it to the sister's side. Let's look at Ruth. Ruth checklist for a kingdom marriage. How do you treat other relationships? How do you treat people around you? I know, I know you've gone through a lot. I know you have. Do you remember what Boaz told you the first time he met her? He said, I have heard. Type the word heard, especially if you're a single listening to me. I have heard. Do you think Ruth knew that what she was doing was preparing her for marriage? Yeah. She did not know that. Do you, do you know that what she was doing, she was doing it to a widow woman, not knowing that she was making her own path to a glorious home. Mm. It's true. Listen, you don't get a good husband just because you're good looking. Ah, type it in, I like that. And I'll put it on my profile. You don't get a good husband just because you're good looking. Looks is good. Don't get me wrong. Men, married good looking women is very important. Women, married good looking men. Because the statistic is very clear. When people get older, they look a little bit ugly. So get a very beautiful one. Ah, somebody's loving. It's okay. So now when you get a little bit ugly, you can now at least handle it. Mm -hmm. and so I'm being honest now. I've been married. So I can tell you something in practical sense. Things you're doing is, is, is a foul in that sense. Females, male as well. Look at Rebecca. Because Isaac is also a pattern of kingdom marriage. I hope you know that. The, the marriage between Rebecca and Isaac. But the same thing. Isaac wasn't idling. I'm Abraham's son. I have, listen, never, sister type it in, never married a man because of his title only. I'm a pastor. You're a pastor. Let me see the church you're pastoring first. Let me see what you have in your bank account first. You don't believe me? I'm telling you things that will help you. Things that will take headaches out of your life for a marriage life. The marriage life is good. They can take you faster to hell than anything you, you can imagine. I'm telling you the truth. Money is not everything. No. Character and money is good. Plenty of money and good, plenty of good character. Uh -huh. You're like, is that available, Pastor? K oh, the pastor I just told you about. If there's one woman that has inspired me not to settle, is that woman? She refused to settle in her marriages, and today she's married to a man you can like to be married to. She's married to a real kingdom man, a king indeed. They are good men. Can, can we type it in, especially those who... No, everyone. Your husband is good. I don't care if you think it's not. They are good men. <laughs> especially the singles. That's what I wanted to say. But even the married ones, type it. You're listening to me on YouTube or Zoom, type it. They are good men. They are good men. Good things are finished. See good men. If those who are married, if your husband is a little bit crazy, that's not the standard, please. That's not the standard. They are good men, and they will always be good men. As long as Jesus tarry and there's one again and there's one again experience, they will always be good men. Don't say told. They are good men. Isaac was working. He didn't just say to and say, I'm Abraham's son. Wait. 
He didn't settle. He had his own things doing before they brought it by. He was in the field. Let's go back to the women, the female. Rebecca. Did she just did she just win the lottery and became Isaac's wife? No. All you did is win the lottery. Because you you have a, I have a very flat tummy, I have a big booty, or I'm very straight, I'm figure zero. It's not only figure zero. Look at what she, she was hard working. She was diligent. It was a wise girl. If you give me what I say, oh, what I, okay, can I watch your comments as well? Lazy. Who wants to marry lazy? Nobody. Nobody. You can't clean your own laundry now and you want to marry. I know what you're thinking. When I marry, I'll marry the son of a president and we have somebody cleaning our laundry. Until you marry. And they realize that even if you're married to um, the president of the whole wide world, you are still going to give instruction. If you're too lazy to take care of your own business, you'll be lazy to even give instruction for your clothes to be washed or something like that. You know, I have a very, 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 very big question I want to ask all of us. Please, if you know the answer, ask me. Why do women always want to marry a rich man and they don't want to be rich themselves? I know it sounds contradictory to what I just said, but it's not. One of the easiest ways to marry a rich man is for you, the female, to be rich yourself. One of the best ways to marry a good man is for you to be good yourself. Boaz did not meet Ruth in her mother-in-law's kitchen. Type it down. Boaz did not meet Ruth in her mother-in-law's kitchen. Papa Abraham seven did not meet Rebecca in her father's bedroom. They met them at the point or place of service. Question, where are you serving in the kingdom? Where are you adding value in the kingdom? Where? You're folding your hands and your husband will appear. Okay. You're creating your own pattern and it's not going to work. I'm going to throw a biggie, especially for the men. Especially, not just the men, but also especially for the men. Not just for the men, but especially for the men. You, you, did you just say you were a kingdom man? Did you just, you're boasting around and say you're a kingdom man? and you're about to marry and you don't have money for dairy. I hear some stupid testimonies lately and it really irritates me. I what is the testimony? Oh, me and my fancy were going to get married and we didn't have enough money. So I told her to bring what she had and we sow it as a seed. Hey, are you not good together? Woman, you already, you know what the man would tell this, the, 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 you know the deceive stupid, stupid, what illiterate. Hey, you can tell I'm, I need to calm down. Sister, stop the Bible for yourself. You want to marry and you don't read how marriage was done in the Bible. You know what I'm saying is one of my very men mentees, thank God the Lord brought her my way and she was believer. She was going to get married and to a pastor son, very untaught. You can't blame the parent. Maybe they taught them and they didn't listen. He told the girl they should have a bank account and they had a bank account they were saving for their wedding. Are you kidding me? They were, you, can't, you can't marry me? How are you going to feed the family? I know you're, you're saying, hey, it's a modern, my dear, the Bible is not modern. And you cannot modernize the Bible. You modernize the Bible, you modernize it against your destiny. Uh, you know that is ancient of this. He's been around for too long. He tells you the things that work. I'm telling you, this Bible will save you from headache. Boaz paid the bride price. Everybody tap it in. Boaz paid the bride price. That's why I've told you, don't marry the poor man. You might not like me, man, for saying this, but it's true. But why do you even want to be poor as a kingdom citizen? Poverty is not a trademark. It's not a strategy. It's nothing as far as our kingdom is concerned. Boaz paid the bride price. He did. Let's go to Isaac. Did Rebecca's parents receive the bride price? Yes. Rebecca has just started eating the bride price at the well. They gave her rings. You want to marry and you can't even buy a ring. Yeah. Let's see. 
it's not correct though. It's not correct. We need to correct. I don't care if people give Isaac as testimonies and it looks like it's okay. It is not biblical. Nobody in this Bible went and took somebody's child without paying anything. Let's look at Jacob. How many, how many years? <laughs> His own bright price, another story. Look at David. I like the king. I love the king. The king married King Saul's daughter. And when he was restored, he said, hey, oh yeah, I remember the bride price. Even if I don't like you, for the sake of the bride price, bring my wife. You, you, you can do it right, or you can do it your tradition, or you can do it how your grandma told you to do it. Bride price, sister, be humble enough and wait for a man to pay a bride price. I had a testimony that really blessed me. A sister got married. The man did the bride price did everything he wanted to do, and now he's mad. And he said, hey, I'm not going to continue this thing. Um, we're supposed to go to court. I was supposed to go to church. I'm not going to do it. He said, okay, bye. Ooh, the man was mad. He said, okay, fine. Because the man didn't want to do it right. She said, he, he left. The man left, and she, she let the man go. If a man cannot love and respect you enough to pay the bride price, you're not valuable to him. It's true. It's not valuable to him. Don't lie to yourself. Mistakes can be corrected, but why make the mistakes when you can avoid them? Ooh, somebody write it. I need this one. Mistakes can be corrected, but why make the mistakes if you can avoid them? In the name of Jesus, for everyone listening to me, I pray for you that you will not make a mistake because you have heard this thing. You will hold onto this wisdom. You will pray over them. You will ask the Lord to help you. And as the Lord will help you, you will do correct. In Jesus' name. Now, as we conclude, I want to give us a checklist. It's not an exhaustive checklist. There's a very good thing to, to have. It's a checklist to have before you even think of getting married. Before you get married. Number one. Discuss parenting styles. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, you say you won't have children. Well, you never know. You never know until the children come. Until you start doing what married people do. So you better discuss about, are we going to have children? If we're going to have children, how are we going to parent them? Is it going to be, you see why it's good to marry the kingdom man? A kingdom woman, because then your foundation is the word. Your parenting style will be according to the word. There's no really, there's no debate. Number two. Have you ever had a bill? Do you have loan? How do you handle money? The big topic is money. I'm trying to break it down, but the big topic is money. How do you handle, no, don't ask you. How do you handle money? Let's talk about how you handle money. Let's see if you have credit cards. I had a very good um, neighbors and they told me a funny testimony. When they were about to get married, it's a lady that told me the testimony. The lady was brought up in the home with hey, the balloon, credit card. They can buy anything on credit. She actually, I don't, I, I don't think I want to tell you how many credit cards she has. And the husband was brought up in a home where they don't believe in credit cards. Hmm, my goodness. So, when they were about to get married, thank God the man knew this checklist I'm, read, I'm, I'm giving you. The man said, um, we need to talk about your credit because we're becoming one. I'm marrying you, so I'm marrying everything you have. You want the credit and the debit if you have debit or credit. <laughs> so they sat down to talk about their finances. Hey, the man was surprised. Let's assume this is not the truth, and I'm not going to lie, so I'm going to tell you an assumption. And I tell you, it was more than this. Let's assume that he had 15 credit cards, okay? The man was like, no, man. So they sat down, and they had to make a payment plan. The man said, there will be no wedding until we have paid all this. He said, I'm not going to take you to the altar and say, I do when I don't do. And they had to take some time. They had to postpone and, and pay the credit card. The man actually helped her to pay the credit card. If a man cannot give to you, help you when you're not yet married, don't think there's hope when you're married. Though. 
And my question to a young lady is, why must you motivate your future when there's a man that can really die for you, die in hope, and help you out? I know what the men are thinking. If we can help the women, why can't the women help? Wait your, wait your role model. Show me from the world where a woman was the one going to bail a man and carry the man. You're not a man. Papa Moroso, you are a castrated being. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And it's true. There are men like that. I'm telling you. And if you can't do what they want, they hate you. They go to another lady. And if the lady can't do what they want, they drop that one and they go to another one. You don't want to be a taller tissue, right? Discuss finances. Number three, talk about the family. Get to know the Okupam and the Mama Nini and the Boo Boo. Know who has the potential to interfere in your home. Because if you don't talk about family, you will know how crazy his cousins are. The first day they'll show up in your house, you think you went to hell. Mm. No, they came. Or you think hell came to your house. Get to know the family. That's why I don't advocate for people to make and three weeks after they are married. What is that? Marriage is not, it's not, it's not try and see. Marriage is a very solid thing. Talk about family, family history, under family. Talk about family history. Do people divorce in your family? Do people stay? Mm. Somebody that, what if my child is going to, people usually didn't stay in my family. Do I tell him? Tell him. Let him know. So if he's making a decision, he knows that he'll be praying for those divorce demons every day or every other day. <laughs> Your family health history. People have cancer. Oh, this family, without Jesus, there's cancer running like a river. Let him know. Let her know. Family, mental health. In our family, people get too deep. Let her know. Let him know. This is a marriage checklist. Don't just boom, bam, bam, bam. I like you. Let's go. With you. And you won't be suffering. Talk about home. Dream home. What's your dream vacation like? Dreams, dreams. No, I'm on a dream. Hey, hey, talk, talk about it though. I, you'll be surprised that some people want to marry you and you're their dream. <laughs> as soon as they marry you, they stop dreaming. <laughs> Mercy. What's your dream? Oh, I want to live in Paris. Um, I am, you know, when I finish this PhD or we're married, we we'll have two, three kids, or if we agree on having four. Then when we have them, we we'll go to Paris. We we'll have the dreams. Talk about dreams. These are things that are have us in homes because people never talked about them before they started. Can a marriage be broken? I know the questions. I will be open for question and answer. Those on YouTube, drop your questions. Uh, those here on Zoom, you're going to be asking me a ton of questions. So write them down. Right, I'm ready. Trust me, I am. Um, dream. You'd be like, okay, what if our dreams are different? We know God put us together. Um, that's an... We'll talk about that in a question and answer. Let me know if this record is wrong. Talk about careers, education, political views, right? We're talking about dreams. Are you aspiring to uh, become a uh, mayor someday? Talk about this before you say, I do. So that when you're saying you do, you know what you're about to do. Mm. Anything that comes to mind, things that are your non-negotiable, talk about them. Do there snow in your family? No, I'm kidding. I mean, it's not, it doesn't have to ask. Um, family history, right? Do you, did your father snow so you can get ready? Do you know what age your father started snoring so you can get yourself ready, right? Visit, if you can visit parents before you're married, it's good. Visit their parents, visit their friends or in-laws. Visit, get to know them outside of them. So what am I saying? Don't meet a man on uh, in a nightclub and marry them in two weeks. Don't meet a woman in a nightclub and marry her in five months. And some people are like, well, I did, but I'm not, the marriage is okay. Spirit, if you did that kind of lottery and you picked the right ticket, what if you did it the right way? <laughs> you would have gotten Miss Angel. <laughs> All right, just so we don't take this and make it too long, a quick summary. Marriage is a good thing. That's the foundation for marriage, and that's God. He's the one that created it. Without him, anything you're doing, you're on your own, and it's bound to fail. He also said that marriage is for men and women, between men and women. Kingdom marriage is not between Tom and, Ta and Sam. It's between Mary and John. Yay, Mary. 
their families will come in. Your 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 husband's family can be in laws or they can be in laws. Mm, type that one in. You want to marry a family where you can call them my in laws, not my in laws. You know the difference, right? In laws, they're kind people. Yeah, in laws. These are my in laws. They are kind towards you. They are patient with you. You are patient with them. You are in love. You call them, come see my in laws. They've come visit me. Your in laws? Hi, Jesus is Lord. Don't have in laws. If you have in laws, pray for God to help you. They treat you by the book. No mercy. Hmm. I, then I went to her house. And she wouldn't even get up to give me breakfast in bed. And I'm the mother in law of the all star of the all. Hmm. And then your name is on the family FM. For not doing laws. They're not patient with you at all. They don't care about you as a person. All they care is the things they want. You have to do it like this. If you don't do it like that, we call them in laws. They are lawyers. They like law. It can be both sides. One of the things I made on my mind and I spoke about it, me and my mother, we had a talk. I told my mother, we're praying for my brother's wife now. Because whoever they married after our prayer, we're going to believe it's answer to prayers and we're going to love them. Told my sister in law, my brother, one of my brothers is married. Ask her how I treat her, she'll tell you. I call her my wife. And it's not Mount. If she ever calls me and says she needs something, she needs my help, that's not an opinion. I don't have a choice. You know why? I have made up my mind to be an in law, not an in law. I have never checked if my husband has been mean to her or she's been mean to my brother. No, not part of their marriage. I'm only there to love. I'm patient and I'm kind with them. Mm. My brother should never tell me anything she has done wrong because I will take her side. I will not. I, I'm telling you the truth. I'm not ready to see anybody divorce. Mm -mm. Except even if they say she's a demon, thank God I have the grace to cast a demon out. She will stay because I am an in love. I'm not an in-law. Mm. Make up your mind to be an in-law. I've told my children, I've prayed for their wives already and their husbands. I said, if you bring somebody here who works on their head, I will still love them all. That's who you choose. I have signed out from being an in-law. I'm being an in-law and that's my purpose. So they will show up. They will show up. Your in-law or your in-laws, they will come. You don't have to invite them. <laughs> don't forbid that they come to rule your home. I will do the checklist. And we've made it clear the best way to enjoy your marriage is to do your purpose. That's what we're ending with today. The best way to enjoy your marriage is to do your purpose. Ruth was not focused busy, busy looking for a husband. She was serving. She was doing purpose and she got married. Um, Rebecca, the two sisterly examples that we looked, she was serving, taking care of her father's cattle, and she met the love of her life. Uh, um, father's um, seven, and he came and he fished her out and took her to her husband. Sister, be humble enough, be valuable enough, be value adding to the point that somebody can pay your bride price. Okay? The men, 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 and that, and your calm. Please don't a loop. You know what a loop is? Don't carry somebody's child away and say, I married you. It's not, it's not marital. It's not. You better do it right. Humble yourself. If you can't marry, wait. Marriage is not for boys. It's for men. Oh, some married men are like me. Oh, this woman gets on my nerves. No, I'm trying to help you. Maybe many, 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 many of the quarrels and the fights in your home can reduce if you just do right. Don't open your family to demons. The foundation needs to be in place. My father in the law says it's never too late to be right. But I thank you for this word. I give you praise for leading us and helping us with this. Um, it's never, never too late for any of us to start over. Lord, I'm praying first for those that are already married. Every marriage represented, every marriage listening. My father, I'm asking, Lord, that you and you alone will heal the hurting areas of this marriage. Lord, are there areas where we can redo some things? I ask for the grace to redo. Father, those that are yet to be married, 
I pray for the females. I say, Lord, give them the grace to wait. Give them the grace to look up to you. Give them the grace to increase their value. So somebody can find them. Lord, I pray that as they, they look forward to being married, they will do the things that can be a plus when they marry. I pray for the men. Father, that you will help them to understand that marriage is not for boys, that marriage is for men. Groom them to be the men of their home. Help them to be financially stable, emotionally. Lord, help them to be men and not mommy boys. I thank you that their ears will hear words and they will follow after your path and not after tradition, not after what their mother is saying, not after what the culture is saying, but after what your word is saying. What culture family? Thank you. Thank you for the grace you give that we could be together. In Jesus' name. Amen.